Welcome back, kids. Uh, I got a quick one for you today. Uh, we're going to continue talking about ecology. Uh, and today we're going to talk about 3.3 energy flow in ecosystems. Okay. By end of this lesson, you should be able to do these two things. Uh, and you should know these key terms. So take good notes and uh, feel free to come back later and check these things out. Okay. So to first talk about energy and food chains and food webs in an ecosystem. Um, like we talked about last section, the main idea we want to know about ecology and ecosystems, the whole reason why they exist is that organisms depend on one another uh, to get energy and to survive. So if things are not interacting in an ecosystem, different organisms, they're not going to be able to take energy for one another. So a food chain and food web are ways to describe how energy flows in an ecosystem. Okay, and the first one we'll talk about is a food chain okay now a food chain is a one-way pathway okay one-way pathway of energy okay so we see here an example of a food chain in a pond would be we have algae right that does photosynthesis and grows in the water we have these little fish called flagfish that eat up the algae then we have bigger fish like a largemouth bass that eats the smaller fish and we have a bird that eats the bigger largemouth bass bass and then finally we have things like alligators okay they're going to eat birds so a food chain like we said is a one-way transfer of energy if you notice right the key thing to remember here is that arrows between organisms point in the direction where energy is moving okay so the arrows represent energy okay um, so a food chain is different than a food web because in nature uh, we know that organisms don't always realistically eat like this right we know alligators don't only eat these very weird birds whose name I'm not even gonna try to say right we know that largemouth bass don't only eat these little fish sometimes they'll eat other largemouth bass gross I know but things happen like this and this is where we come up with a food web okay so a food web is how a food chain works in an environment uh, realistically Okay, uh, if we notice, if we look down at the food web here, right, we see arrows going all over the place. Okay, and this is because a food web represents how energy is realistically transferred uh, in an ecosystem. So it's realistically transferred, right? So largemouth bass are not only going to eat flagfish. Okay, um, so to talk about a food web here, we have an example of like uh, marine mammals, let's say. Uh, in the ocean in the Arctic, right? We have algae growing in the Arctic and in the oceans. Uh, we have little krill, which are like shrimp, okay? They're going to eat algae in the ocean. Um, they're very, very tiny. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, right, when Dory and Marlin get eaten by the whale, that whale's trying to eat krill or all the little shrimp. Um, so these krill are eaten by a bunch of different things, okay? They're eaten by small fish like herring, anchovy, squids. They're eaten by seals, by birds. All right, if we notice, this energy starts to go in all different directions, right? If we look at the fish here, okay, like herring, they're eaten by other fish, they're eaten by seals, they're eaten by penguins, they're eaten by Ross seals, right? These arrows go all over the place. So a food web is how energy is realistically transferred, right? It doesn't always go in one direct line, like a food chain, okay? It goes all over the place. Animals eat different types of animals um, and other organisms like algae. Okay, so food chain, one single straight pathway of an organism eating another one. Food web, how it realistically happens in nature, almost like multiple food chains together. All right, so when we talk about food webs, it's important to know that the majority of producers are not consumed. Okay, so again, our producers are autotrophs, anything that's making energy on their own, such as plants, algae, uh, bacteria, okay. They are not all consumed. Um, and this is a, another food web here, right? So we have kind of some, maybe something we'd see around here um, out in the Midwest type area, some wooded areas, some plains, right? We see on our bottom, we have our producers, plants, flowers, berries, pine cones. Um, and we have our decomposers, right? We have fungi, we have mushrooms, we have worms, detritivores, okay? Um, the next level, we have our primary consumers, where we have deer, squirrels, moths, frogs, uh, some birds, and like a mouse type thing. 
We have our secondary consumers, right? We have rabbits, a marten, which is like a fox type thing, a um, little lizard, and like a raccoon. And then we have our tertiary consumers. Tertiary means three, okay? Which is kind of the top level consumers. We have bobcats, mountain lions, and coyotes. Um, so as we see, right, this food web here, um, the arrows are going all over the place. These animals are going to eat each other. Um, but again, all their energy comes from the producers, right? And if we think about it, not every producer in an environment, in an ecosystem, is going to get consumed, right? For example, trees are producers, pine trees, right, um, which moths might live on and eat off of. Uh, but not every pine tree is going to be totally eaten and destroyed by moths, right? There's just way too many pine trees. So the majority of producers are not consumed. Um, and then finally, right, without decomposers and detritivores, nutrients would remain locked in dead organisms. So if we look at this as energy, right, these lines, okay, arrows equal energy. And if we look at it, right, as energy moving from the producers, which take sun energy and turn it into sugars, we see energy moves up to our first level of consumers. Then it moves up again to our second level. Then finally to our third level, right? So eventually all the energy uh, is ending up here with like the coyote, the mountain lion, the bobcat. And when these guys die, if they didn't go into the soil or somehow, or they weren't decomposed, the energy would just be trapped in our bodies. So really, um, food webs, food chains, they don't just go straight up. Eventually, this energy comes all the way back down to the decomposers, okay? Um, so this is a really important fact, right, that decomposers uh, and detritivores allow energy to go back into the soil, right? Worms and mushrooms and bacteria are going to break down the dead bodies of like coyotes uh, and put those minerals and nutrients back into the soil. All right, and this is said best in The Lion King when Mufasa tells Simba, right, we eat the antelope, but then we die and become the soil. The grass uses the soil, the antelope we eat the grass. It's the circle of life. Okay, so when we talk about disturbances in the food webs, right, this is when something goes wrong in an ecosystem. Uh, and this can happen for lots of reasons, right, from both biotic factors and abiotic factors, okay. Let's say, somehow, um, there was a giant forest fire, right. If we had a giant forest fire that just wiped out all the trees and flowers and plants and everything, we're not going to be able to send energy up here. So... Only the really strong animals, right? There's going to be a lot of competition between primary consumers to get energy from the few plants or trees that survive. So maybe all the little mice are going to die. Maybe all the tree frogs are going to die because they won't have a place to live. Same thing with the moths, right? If we then affect, if these things are dead, then there's going to be no energy going up here to like ravens, and they're going to die, right? And if uh, maybe these little lizards, too, are not going to have anything to eat, which means the coyotes won't have anything to eat. Okay, so if there's a disturbance in a food web, it's going to totally disrupt the ecosystem, okay? Um, same thing, if we, we can do this on the next level, too. It doesn't have to be producer. Uh, you can also have this happen to consumers, okay? If there was to be, for example, a really bad uh, virus going around that affects jackrabbits, right? And we were to wipe out the jackrabbits, okay? A couple things would happen to this ecosystem, right? There's going to be a lot more uh, competition between the next level of consumers, right, the tertiary level, because there's not going to be as much food, right? So maybe the bobcat population is going to go down, or the coyote population is going to go down, right? And this is also going to affect the level below it, right? If we don't have jackrabbits eating all these moths and, uh, you know, frogs or plants or whatever, right, the moth population is really going to start to go up, right? We're going to have even more moths which is going to eat even more trees, okay? And then we might start to kill some more trees, all right? So anytime we lose even just one organism in a food web in an ecosystem, it disrupts the whole thing. All right, so moving on from food webs, right, we're going to talk about how those actually uh, relate to energy in an ecosystem, okay? And to do this, we're going to talk about trophic levels. Um, so each step in the food chain or food web is called a trophic level, okay? And this is really just referring to uh, energy, okay? How much energy is in every level of producer or then consumer on top of it, okay? 
Um, to show trophic levels, there's three type of ecological pyramids um, that show energy at each trophic level. Um, so first off, when we talk about trophic levels, like we said, we're referring to producers and consumers. So our first level is always a producer, right? We have our primary producers, such as plants, algae, bacteria, that produce energy through photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. We then have our next level, uh, which is consumers. So our first level consumers. Then we have animals that eat those, our secondary level consumers, and then third level consumers, okay? Uh, sometimes we can have a fourth level consumer depending on the ecosystem. Uh, and again, this is just back like on our last slide where we talked about plants and then things like bunny rabbits um, eating smaller things like moth, right? Plants, moths, bunny rabbits, mountain lions, okay? So each one of those is a nootrophic level. Um, so the first type of pyramid to show trophic level is a pyramid of energy, okay? So the first one is a pyramid of energy. And really, this is just a pyramid showing how much energy is at each trophic level. So on our first level, we have 100%, right? Primary producers, such as plants, uh, are going to produce 100% of their energy from the sun, okay? And same thing with chemosynthesis, right? 100% from chemicals. So first level is 100%. As we get to the next level, only about 10% of the energy from plants moves up to the next level, okay? And if we think back to the first slide about a couple minutes ago, um, where we said, right, that not every producer is consumed, this makes sense, right? If we have 100, um, let's say, tomato plants, maybe bunny rabbits and raccoons are going to be able to eat the tomatoes off of 10 of them, okay? So only 10% of the energy moves up per level. Um, as we move up, right, we see, it again, only 10% of the original energy from the primary producers down here from plants moves up. So we have 10%, then 1%, and then finally 0.1%. Okay, so when we get to a third level consumer, like a mountain lion, okay, um, mountain lions are only going to have about 0.1% of the energy uh, that was originally grown in all the plants in an area. Okay, so our first ecological pyramid shows energy. The next period, uh, uh, the next table is kind of related, all right? The second one is a table of biomass, okay, is a table of biomass. And this literally means, right, mass, kind of like, uh, like mass, how much substance something has, and bio. So how much mass of life exists at a level? All right, when we're referring to mass, again, we're literally referring to how much organic material exists. Uh, and just like we said on a pyramid, right, usually the bottom uh, is the biggest part. So the bottom of, or our primary producers, right, uh, like plants, are going to have the biggest biomass usually um, in an ecosystem, right? And we can think about this in terms of like pounds or kilograms. Uh, we'll do kilograms since we're in science, right? Let's say there's 5 million kilograms of plants in an ecosystem. As we move up to our first level of consumers, right, bunny rabbits, squirrels, turkeys, there's only 500,000 uh, kilograms of these animals. As we move up to the next level, right, coyotes, snakes, and foxes, there's only 5,000 kilograms, okay? And then finally at the next level, there's at the third level highest, like mountain lions, there's only five kilograms, right? So as we see, same thing with the with the uh, table of energy here, right? In energy, we lost 10%. As we move up a table of biomass, we're losing weight, okay? Maybe there's only two or three mountain lions in an area as opposed to 100,000 plants in an area, all right? And this brings us to our third table, um, which shows ecology, right? Our third ecological pyramid, which is a pyramid of numbers, okay? Uh, and this literally refers, again, to the numbers of living organisms uh, in an ecosystem. So again, here, right, maybe we have 5 million plants living, not pounds, not kilograms, a total number of plants, right? 5 million living. Here, maybe we have 500,000 mice, turkeys, squirrels, rabbits living. Here, maybe we have 5,000 between martens, hawks, coyotes, and snakes. And then again, maybe in an area, we only have five mountain lions living. Okay, so our three uh, ecological pyramids of energy, 
of biomass or how much mass okay m material exists at each trophic level and then numbers right actually how many number of organisms exist at each level all right so these three different pyramids uh, of ecology are really important for showing different things right the reason we might have a pyramid of numbers versus a period of biomass is for different things right if we think about um, how many thousands of insects can live and eat off of a tree right there's only going to be one tree but there might be a thousand insects okay um, so in the period of a numbers right the insects would be much bigger right if we had a thousand but if we had done it on the period of biomass right one tree is still going to weigh much more than a thousand insects added up so again these different pyramids show us uh, different aspects of an ecosystem that we may want to see um, so just really reflect and try to remember what each one shows all right so that's it um, it was a nice quick one not too much so go back review uh, if you don't know anything look it up look in the video rewatch it if you have any questions feel free to tweet at me at mr soda 13 okay uh, or email me the questions or you can also come see me before school so I hope